Truly, we bless the Lord on this morning. He is worthy to be praised another day that he has blessed us. The 13th of September, 2020, and God has still sustained us and kept us and allowed us to yet uh, be in your presence and be among them that believe, allowed us to lift up his word and give a word of confidence and a word of encouragement to them that believe. On this morning, we will be reading out of Exodus, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 8th verse. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horses and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Philarop before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians who ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. I would like to encourage you this morning in the fact that God is in the center of your circumstance. And that when you put your trust in him, you can take confidence in knowing that God has your back. You can take confidence in knowing that come hell or high water, the Lord is more than able to sustain you to help you survive what you need to survive, to get you through what you need to get through. That's the kind of God we serve. If I might use for a word this morning, it would be facing, facing expectations. Facing expectations. The space between what is possible, what is probable, and what is believable creates a thin line. But when we add God to the equation, God has the ability to be the multiplier and the magnifier of our expectations. Mm -hmm. What we don't see, God is able to make it a reality. What we hear as we hear a word in our spirit, where God gives us a nudge to, cons to console us, is that which comes from him who is eternal. So God is the one that's able to multiply it. God is the one who's able to magnify it. God is the one who's able to give us the level of expectation that we would not have except God deposited in us. And I'm glad, that's faith, beloved, that's faith, but I'm glad that God has the ability to give me the sustenance and the strength I need so that I can believe the impossible. That's the kind of God we serve. I know things look impossible today. Things look crazy. It looks like darkness has fallen over the earth. It looks like situations that have stood for years are crumbling and falling. But understand this. God still gives us who believe in him as our sovereign Lord a measure, a grain of hope 
so that we can keep our confidence in him. You didn't think you would arrive. You didn't think you would make it. Here we are six months into a pandemic. Here we are six months into being sheltered in and we're yet surviving. Here we are six months into a time that had never existed, at least in my lifetime before, and we're surviving. We've lost a lot of lives. God bless the families who had to endure loss of lives. But in the course of the loss, God has still given us a ray of hope that if we put our trust in him, he will sustain us. He will sustain us. When the disciples found themselves in a situation where they weren't able to do what the Lord had told them they would have the capability to do, the Lord began to let them know the measure by which he measures their confidence and the measure by which he measures their faithfulness. He said, all you needed was a grain of a mustard seed. All you needed was an inkling of confidence and trust in me and you could accomplish what I said was possible. Yeah. The Bible says in St. Matthew 17 and 20, and Jesus said unto him, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, <clears throat> if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Yeah. Jesus said, your level of impossibility is a smidgen, a fraction of what is demanded of you because if you have the grain of a mustard seed of faith, he said, nothing shall be impossible so you don't have to explain it. He said, but you got to believe the fact that I command in you the ability to believe the impossible when you put your confidence in Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Jesus went on further to say, as he was communicating to his disciples in St. John 14 and 13, he said, whatever you ask in my name, whatever is that which you determined to need or to ask or in stand in need of, he said, whatever you ask in my name, he said, that will I do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, Lord have mercy, anything is a great word because it takes off the parameters of limitations. If you ask anything in my name, Jesus said, because you know me, because you trust me, because you keep my commandments, he said, I will do it. God said, I'm giving you the ability to ask for that which you think in your own realm is impossible, but if you ask anything in my name, he said, I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. It's relationship to him. Anything in my name. When he was comparing the ability or the, the weight of following him in faith believing. Jesus said, listen, first off, I've come to deliver you. I've come to set you free. He said, but you have to be accountable to trusting me and be faithful. He said, you got to look at this world, you got to look at your circumstances and situations as unimportant in the sense that you have to put me first and be willing to walk away from everything except me. He said, I've got to be the first priority in your life. He said, and I'll take you to a level you could never arrive at without trust and confidence in me. He gives a comparison in Luke 18 and 25, he said, listen, for it is easier for a camel to go through the needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, then who can be saved? Lord, how can we, how can we arrive at that level if you're giving us impossibilities? How can we receive in 
received and be empowered by salvation, be delivered by salvation, how can we step into that level where we're able to walk into the kingdom of God? He said, who then can be saved? It's got to be impossible to be saved. If you're saying it's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle than to be saved, he said, what, what must we do to be saved? What capacity, what, what mindset, what belief system ought we to have to be saved? And then he says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. He says, listen, disciples, that which you see to be impossible with you is all possible with God. Then Peter said, Lord, we left all to follow you. They recognized that even though they were willing to follow, they needed to know that that which they were entering into was a level of expectation that caused them to walk in possibility, expectation, power of God, the move of God, and that they would not be limited to anything because they put their trust in him. Facing expectations, facing the unknown, yet God has given you the inkling that he's going to bring to pass what you put your trust in. What a mighty God we serve. Romans 8 and 24 says then, for we are saved by hope. He says, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what does he yet hope for? He says, I'm taking you to a level for you to see things that you don't see with your natural eye, yet you believe it in your, in your spirit. And so therefore, the inclination or the unction of the Holy Ghost gives you clarity to see the impossible. Oh, God, I thank you. It looks like you're looking at a wall, but God will give you the capacity to see beyond the wall and recognize that God is going to bring to pass that which I am trusting him for. It's not what it looks like. It's what God says. It's not what it looks like. It's what God has promised as I put my trust in him. But he says, but if we hope for that we see not, then we, with, then we do with patience wait for it. If I have hope in that which I don't see, then my level of expectation is with the eternal because I can't see it, so God has to bring it to pass. So with patience, I wait for God yes. to command whatever it is in my life, glory to God, to come to pass. I'm trusting God for the impossible. I'm trusting God for the invisible. I'm trusting God for that which only God can give me the inkling to believe him for. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. God jump starts us, if you will. He jump starts our expectations. You know, somebody put a jumper cables on a car, at least they used to. But put a jumper cables in a car, you're trying to give it a boost so that it can start again. Glory to God. So that it can rev up, so that it can run and get back to the level to which it is competent or which it is functional. So God jump starts our expectations by the command of his word. When we believe the word of God, God gives us a level of expectation that only he can sustain. Facing expectations. Oh God, I thank you. We have the certainty of God's sovereignty in our midst. What he allows is what he allows. What he allows is what he suffers to be. God is the totality of our expectations. God is the one that says yea and nay to our existence. He's sovereign and nobody else is greater than him. Look at our text here. Oh God, I thank you for your word. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, 
and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Children of Israel had spent over 400 years in bondage, in slavery to the Egyptians, and yet God had ordained this and even spoke this word to our father of faith, Abraham. So this was not a coincidence. This was not something that just happened. We don't know why it happened. We do know why it happened, and as a product of looking at it now from our perspective, we see that God always had a plan. So he allowed, he hardened the heart of Pharaoh so that the children of Israel would be pursued. Sometime God, in order to get you to your expectation, will allow you to be pursued and or pushed by them that mean you no good. God will put you in a situation so that you have to move out in order to be out and be blessed to the level God wants to bless you. So God said, listen, I'm going to bring into your life them that will pursue you. And then it went a little further, and the Lord, but the Egyptians pursued after them <clears throat> all the horses, chariots, and Pharaoh, and of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them by camping by the sea. Understand this, God will not only allow your circumstance to pursue you, God will allow your circumstance to outnumber you. It will outnumber you where you have no choice but to move. You have no choice but to be pushed into your expectation. God said, I'll fix it because this is still divinely orchestrated by God. God said, I'm pushing you by outnumbering you so that you have to move where I said. You have to go where I determined you to go. He said, so I'll, pursue, I'll allow the enemy to pursue you. I'll allow the enemy to outnumber you. And then in the 10th verse, he said, listen, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. They were afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Not only Will, they pursue, will your enemy pursue you, or your situation pursue you, or your situation outnumber you? God will make it visible so that you can see your circumstance with your natural eye and say, listen, I'm afraid. Hmm. I'm nervous. I don't know what's going to happen next. But God is still sovereign over the crisis. God is still sovereign over the situation. And then the Bible says in the 11th verse, and the, the, the children of Israel began to complain because they said, look, you brought us out here to die in the wilderness. He said, we told you we didn't want to lead out of Egypt. And then he told them this. He said, listen, at least when we were in Egypt, we told you to leave us alone and we could have continued to work for our masters or the Egyptians. But you brought us out here to die. God will allow you, by your crisis or your situation, to experience frustration and discouragement pushing you into, glory to God, your expectation. Because yeah. otherwise you wouldn't move. Otherwise you wouldn't do a thing. But God said, I'm taking you to a level, to a place, glory to God, that you would never arrive at by facing your expectation. And when you face your expectations, mm, God will give you a plan. Yeah. Ooh, God will give you a plan. Actually, facing expectations re require a plan. And God has the plan for your life. So he says, listen, when you face expectations, it requires a plan. God had a plan for Israel. Ooh, glory to God. For 400 years, God had a plan. For 400 years, God had a purpose. For 400 years, God had a design. Every human emotion that you can conceive 
was apparent in the lives of the Israelites and they were fearful, they were frustrated, and yet God brought them to the edge of the sea without any opportunity to turn back. And we know the story. God by his mighty hand. I like the fact that God hardened Pharaoh's heart because even after Pharaoh told the Israelites they could leave, God hardened it. But God still brought them out by a high hand. In other words, God was the one who gave them, if you will, the capacity to leave in the volume to which they left. Yeah. Some historians have it, over three million Israelites left with their stuff, with their gold that was given to them by their masters. And God orchestrated this on their behalf because they were facing expectations that required a plan. And God has the plan for your life when he allows you to be pursued, when he allows you to be outnumbered, when he allows you to be frustrated, when he allows you to be discouraged. God says, listen, you, you get ready to walk into your expectation. He says, so therefore, he said, listen, I require a plan. And because I'm the one who is the plan giver, I've already fixed it for you. And you can trust God's ability to bring you out. Yes. You can trust his ability to make it happen. See, God knows how to make things happen. That's why he calls it come to pass. Because God knows how to make things happen. Oh, God. First and foremost, God is sovereign. Mm. He's sovereign over everything. The scripture says in Jeremiah 32 and 17, Our, <clears throat> our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Prophet Jeremiah says, God, you have made it all. Yeah. You are sovereign. You stretched out the heavens. You stretched out the earth. And you made it by your hand. And he says, there's nothing too hard for you. Jer not Jeremiah, Abraham was asked the question in the presence of Sarah as well as in the presence of the angel. Is there anything too hard for God? No, he's sovereign. He can turn night into day. He can turn rain into sunshine. There's nothing that God cannot do that he chooses to do when you choose it. Oh, God, I thank you. So the reason why you got blessed, because God chose to bless you. The reason why you're still standing, because God chose to keep you. The reason why you have survived it all is because God said, I'll keep you. I'll sustain you. I'll maintain you, because I'm sovereign God. Proverbs 19 and 21 out of the NIV says this, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but is the Lord's purpose. It, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Whatever you contrived in your imagination, the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked, but I, the Lord, I search it. So therefore, all your thoughts, all your imaginations, all your desires, he said, listen, uh, many are the thoughts and the plans in the heart of man. But the Bible says here in Proverbs 19 and 21, but it is the Lord's purpose Ooh, glory, that prevails. God said, listen, I got the plan. When you're facing expectation, beloved, it requires a plan. And we who love God, we who have confidence in Jesus Christ, he is the plan. He's the plan and the way. And as we put our trust in him, he directs 
our path. He directs our encounters. He directs what we go through. That's why you don't have to frustrate yourself. I know you're outnumbered, but you still don't have to frustrate yourself. I know you're disgusted, but you still don't have to frustrate yourself. Because God is moving you to your expectation. And it requires a plan. And the bottom line is God is sovereign over every plan, over every thing that pertains to man. Oh, God. So first and foremost, God is sovereign. He has the plan. Secondly, we've been ordered, because God has the plan, we've been ordered by the divine. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and 133, order my steps in thy word, and let not iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep by three steps. We have been ordered, just like a, a drill sergeant would order his troops, we've been ordered by cadence of Almighty God's Word that we walk in His divine purpose on His behalf. God said, not only am I sovereign, but I order your purpose. So facing expectations <laughs> require a plan and God said, my plan is to order your purpose. So I order your steps. I order your steps. I order your destination. I order your beginning. I order your ending. He said, why? Because it requires a plan. Yes. And God said, I'm the master builder. I'm the master planner. So therefore, I order your steps by my divine will. Not only does he order our steps, he orchestrates, mm -hmm. he orchestrates that which we do by his divine counsel. He orchestrates it. Not only does he order our steps and say, go in my name, go in my person, walk in my ability, but he orchestrates how I walk. He orchestrates how I talk. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. But listen, my level of expectation can only be arrived at when I walk in the faith in Almighty God, my faith in Almighty God, and His ability to bring to pass what He has ordered. Amen. When I see myself more than what I am, it's because God ordered it. Glory to God. When I see myself at a place that I'm not at right now, God ordered it. He ordered my steps. And not only order me my step, he orchestrates me in the process of attaining his purpose. He knows I'm walking into it. He knows I'm being pushed into it because I'm outnumbered, listen, by my adversaries. I'm outnumbered by them who are the naysayers. So God said, listen, not only do I command the divine in your life and order your step, he said, but I'm going to orchestrate. And listen, not only your step, but your path. Mm -hmm. mm. So that facing those expectations require a plan. And God is the master builder that builds us as we put our trust in him. We are orchestrated. The Bible says in Psalms 37 and 23, one of my favorite verses, it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be able to cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. God said, listen, I ordered my word in your life. I commanded you to walk. Now as you walk, I order where you walk. Glory to God. I commanded you to walk. Now I order where you walk. And when you fall, be there. When you get up, I'll be there. Because I'm trying to allow you to face expectations. And it requires the plan of God in order for you, oh God, in order for it to be manifested. Oh God, I thank you. We not only is he sovereign and has commanded and ordered our step, he orchestrates our steps because facing expectations 
require a plan. And not only that, we have a promise from the divine that this too shall come to pass. We have a promise from God that not only am I orchestrating and ordering in your life and sovereign over your life, but I'm doing this for a purpose so that which you're facing will come to pass. Oh God, I thank you. Proverbs 3 and 5, very familiar. He said, listen, this is why I can promise it. Because God says, I don't lie, my word don't fail. But this is why I can promise your end before your beginning. Because I'm the God of, listen, Alpha and the Omega. I'm the God of that which never was and that which will be. He said, I promised it. And I don't go back on a promise. I bring to pass what I have spoken. Proverbs 3 and 5 says this, trust in the Lord. In the course of him orchestrating and ordering your life and sovereign over your life, he says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. He said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. He said, you want to live long? Uh-huh. He says, walk in my promise. You want to live long and be listen, be encouraged in the things you step into? He said, walk in my purpose. He said, I'll direct your path. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to lean upon your earthly wisdom, but rather trust God for the infinite. And God will allow you to, as you face expectations, you'll know who has the plan. Because facing expectations require a plan. Ooh, God, I thank you for your sovereignty. Back to our text here. And Moses said unto his people in the 13th uh, verse of Exodus 14, and Moses said unto his people, Fear not. <laughs> Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, yes, yes, yes. ye shall See them again, no more, forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold glory to come, your peace. Not only is he sovereign, not only has he commanded order in my life, not only does he direct my steps by his divinity, but God has given me a promise that if I put my trust in him, lean not unto my own understanding, that God will bring to pass what he has purposed. So therefore, my responsibility in the midst of adversity is to trust God for the results. Because all this says to me is that God has already fought for me and is, and is fighting for me even as I speak. He told them, listen, you're outnumbered. Listen, I know you're depressed. Listen, I know you're discouraged. He said, but stand still. Glory to God. And see the salvation of the Lord. He said, listen, I'm about to bring to pass your greatest expectation because you think you're going to die, but I've already said you're going to live. I know you got the Egyptians behind you. And I know you got the Red Sea in front of you. And we know the story. God said, Moses, what's in your hand? Raise it up. Mm -hmm. And God gave them a path. Glory to God because God gives you a path because he has the plan. Yes. He allowed them to walk over on dry land. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen, you saw that problem before. But he said, just like the Egyptians, you won't see them no more forever. That which troubled you will no longer trouble you. That which was a problem in the past will not be a problem in the future. Because God said, I want to take you to levels of expectation that are beyond your capacity. So facing expectation requires the plan of God to get you where you need to be. Yeah. Understand this. Had they not followed God's man, they would have died. They would have died. But they followed what God said, and God took them to a level of impossibility that they would have never embraced. 
nor believe. God will have you to believe some stuff that only God can deposit in your spirit. You'll look at it and say, that's crazy, that's impossible, but God will give you a level of expectation where you sit back and say, listen, listen, for this to work out, God, this got to be you. For this to work out, God, this got to be your plan. I don't see it. I don't taste it. I don't feel it. And sometimes I don't even believe it. But I'm trusting the fact that you commanded it to come to pass. Children of Israel said, we gonna, listen, we didn't have to die in the water, in the, in the desert. He said, listen, we could have died in Egypt. But Moses said, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. The Egyptians, the problems, the situation, the circumstance, the cancer, the diabetes, the stuff that you've been struggling with, the poverty, all that you've been uh, dealing with by trusting me. He said, you'll see no more forever. He said, God will fight for you. Expect the doctor to give a good report. Expect the loan to go through. Expect the family to come together. Expect situations to change. I know it looks hopeless, but expect it to happen. Because facing expectations require a plan. And God is the master planner for you and I as we put our trust in him. Another occasion where the children of Israel were outnumbered, the people of God, and God told him to stand still just by just for information here. Second Chronicles 2015. When Jehoshaphat King was outnumbered, the Lord spoke to him and said, Listen, in 2 Chronicles 2015, and he said, Hearken ye all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. God told Moses that God will fight for you because he has the plan. I can't, he can't take you to your expectation if he ain't got a plan. And because he has the plan, he's doing all the fighting. He's doing all, he, listen, he's dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. Tomorrow, go ye out against them, behold, they come up against the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the book before the wilderness. This is what God told the children of Israel to do. Ye shall not need, oh God, I thank you. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand you still, sounds familiar, don't it? And see the salvation of the Lord with you. Oh Jerusalem, fear not. Oh Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. Nor be dismayed. Now this lets me to know that discouragement, Despondency, uh, listen, listen, all manner of frustration is ours in our human emotion. But God said, don't allow that to be your strength, but rather allow the, the, the confidence of God's word to be your encouragement in the impossible. They were outnumbered. Everybody had ganged up on them. Have you ever been ganged up on and God still allowed you to hold your peace and fought your battle? Because God got a plan. He's got a plan to bring you out. He said, Look, fear not, be dismayed, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. You need not be fight in this battle. He said, set yourselves and allow God to bring to pass his purpose. Expectations are ours. Oh God, I thank you. Dreams are ours. Oh, what we desire for God to the, to the level that we know it is in our, not in our capacity are ours as we put our trust in him. Romans 8, 30, 8 and 30 says this, Moreover, whom we did predestinate, then we also called, meaning us, and whom we called, then we also justified, and whom we justified, then we also glorified. God has a plan. But Romans 8, 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Facing expectations require a plan. 
and God is the master builder. We have to learn and continue to learn to think outside the box. Trust God for the impossible. Trust God for the unbelievable. Because if God continues to command his word and his walk and his presence in your life and continue to push you into levels that is beyond your capacity, God has the plan. God has the remedy. God has the conclusion. Yeah. Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's expectation, beloved. God is able to bring the path all that, listen, we, we can think of and can imagine and that which we can't imagine nor think of, God can take it to the next level. Because the scripture says here, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, that must exceed faith, God is able to take it to the level of the unimaginable. Yes, yes, yes. God is able to take it to the level of the miraculous. Oh, God, I thank you. We can look at Jesus just like the disciples did when he calmed the sea and said this. What manner of man is this? That even the winds yes. obey him. So when I'm facing expectations, it requires a plan. And I know this much, that God has the plan intact, for he is the Alpha and the Omega of my circumstances. Our key verse of Exodus 14 and 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Oh God, thank you for your word. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you this day. Mm. Oh, God has a day. God has a purpose. God has a day you're going to be brought out. God has a day you're going to be, listen, lifted up. God has a day that it's going to be made right this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, mm. ye shall see them again no more forever. Facing expectations requires a plan. And God is the master builder on our behalf with all the plan we need for the anointing for the life he has for us. So if you don't know Jesus Christ this morning, he has a plan for your life. You might be frustrated. You might be discouraged. You might be outnumbered. But the scripture says, here's his word divinely imparted to you that would believe it. He says in St. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the plan of love. That's the level of expectation God wants to take you to, is that you can inherit and be in, in, this, in dwell with eternal life when you confess your sins and trust Jesus, oh God, as master and Lord of your life. Yes. You can ask, just like the disciples said, who then can be saved? As we put our trust in him, in the natural it is impossible, but in the Spiritual, it is made possible by Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You confess what you believe. And your expectation is, is that if I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm saved upon the confession of my sins and the acceptance of him as Lord and Savior of my life. Romans 10, 17 says, So that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
So if you're listening to me today, viewing me today, and your heart has been stirred, you've been moved to believe God for the impossible. Yes. Why don't you take him at his word? Thank you, Lord. You're facing expectations, yeah. but you can't move into your possibilities without a plan. Mm. And God is the master planner and the master builder. He's the beginning and the end of whatever you can see in your thought process. God said, if you trust me, I'll bring about your best. Mm. Woo, glory. And I'll bring you to that place of peace mm -hmm. where you can stand still and allow God to fight for you and be at peace with God as you put your trust in him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, all that have confessed their sins and accepted you as Lord this morning, I pray for their salvation. I pray, God, that the Holy Ghost would indwell them upon their belief and allow them to be made new creation according to 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I ask God that they would believe you as Savior of their life so that they don't perish but they live and also accept you as Lord of their life so they can be guided, they can be pushed, they can be directed, they can be orchestrated by the Holy Ghost into the path of righteousness so Lord you can get more glory and they too can be glorified in you. This is my prayer over all our unsaved loved ones, God, right now. All them that are on the edge, all them that are on the brink, all them are just, that are just right there. Help them to know that they don't have to run anymore. They don't have to hide anymore. All they gotta do is trust you for the plan as they face expectations and believe you for their lives and believe in you for more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Truly, we bless the Lord on this morning. We thank you all that view this broadcast. We thank you all that support this broadcast. Oh, God, we thank you for your prayer requests. We thank you for your prayers uh, so that we can continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, the Lord is doing something great. He's doing something great not only in our churches, but he's doing something great in our nation. The Lord will be vindicated. Yes. The Lord will bring about revival. The Lord will bring about what he has purposed as we continue to trust him. Not the crisis, not the circumstance, but trust him. God will do what he has promised. If you want to um, send us some um, notification and or uh, through the mail, our mailing address is NBCC, Post Office Box, 551 Shell Pine, PA, 18914. If you want to send us your prayer request, or if you, uh, God is directing you to send us an offering, we appreciate that. For those of you that would like to um, send us an offering through our Cash App, our Cash App is a dollar sign NBCC, P Satch, and we thank you for that in advance. We appreciate you. We appreciate New Beginnings Christian Church. Thank God for the faithful here at New Beginnings Christian Church. Amen. And thank God for all of them that support this work. We can be viewed on Facebook. We can be viewed on YouTube. Just put in New Beginnings Christian Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or Pete Satch or Paul Satch, and you can pull up our video. We thank you in advance. Now I'm going to pray one and for all. Father, in the name of Jesus, all under the sound of my voice, I pray for their health, their strength. I pray for their obedience at taking you at your word. I come against again and curse the virus. I curse sickness and infirmity in our midst. I curse all that would hinder us to walk in health and in strength. I pray for the bereaved families who have lost lives to violence. I come against the violence. I pray for peace and safety with even our coming election, that all is done well. I come against the naysayers. I come against the haters. I, I plead in your word where you said, love thy neighbor as thyself. I pray the love of God over this nation. I pray for uh, our elected leaders that they would come to themselves as Hezekiah came to himself, fell on his face, and asked for mercy. 
I pray for that amongst our leaders. I pray for that amongst them that are in positions of authority that have compromised themselves and or have become complicit and are not standing on the word and the promise of God. I pray, God, that you would speak to them in the midnight hour and let them know that you are sovereign and besides you there is no other. So God, keep us as we put our trust in you and we thank you, Lord, how you bless us. For Christ's sake, amen, amen, amen and amen.